Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about um, scatter plots. Scatter plots are value and predicting values from a line of best fit. So uh, we're going to start off um, before we actually start talking about our um, scatter plots. We're going to just review graphing um, briefly. So let's say we have a simple equation like this with two variables, x and y. The x axis is always your horizontal axis, and your y axis is always the vertical axis. So these are really just two number lines. So I just wrote, I just have five down here, but that's one, two, three, four. So each one of these uh, um, little tick marks, little boxes represents one, so one, two, three, etc. So we can find the points, find points on that line by plugging values in. And I know you've done this before. So if we choose zero as one of our uh, coordinates for X, we plug that in for X, we can find out what Y has to be by evaluating. So Y is equal to one. So that's our first point. So then we do pick another point, pick any point you want. It'll be on the line or any point that you want. So we have 2 times 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 or 3. So when x is 1, y has to be 3. And then finally, we'll do one more. So y equals 2 times 2. So we'll choose 2 plus 1. That's 4 plus 1. That'll be 5. So now we have three points. This is the x coordinate, that's the y coordinate. So that'll be the first point, second one over one, up three. Now notice this is the x, um, y, I mean, the ordered pair is one comma three. That's your x value, that's your y value. This, this coordinate represents any point that is going to be above or below the one on the x axis. Now, at the same time, this one right here matches up with any any value that will be uh, at the same height as your 3. So there's only one point that fits both that both of those criteria, and that's where it is. So you can, you can get that point by going over 1 and up 3. Oh, man. Oh, I thought it was, I thought it stopped, but I guess it didn't. Okay, so now we plot these points. One, three, two, five, and then you draw your line. Okay, now a scatter plot is a little bit different. We, on a scatter plot, we have uh, some information. This is maybe from, a, let's say, from an experiment in class. And we, we have different people that walked different amounts of time, and... We wanted to see how far how far they walked. So this is real data. This is, this is stuff that actually happened, whereas this is something that just followed a model. So what, the first person walked one one hour, and in that time walked four miles. That's pretty far for one mile and one hour. The second person walked two hours, so twice as long, and they went six miles. Third person walked one hour and a little bit less than the first person, two, uh, two miles. Three, eight, three, five, so three, mile, three, three hours, five miles, one, two, three, four, five, two, seven. So you just plot all the points. And what you end up with as you can see, is a bunch of a bunch of points, and they're all scattered around, and that's why it's called a scatter plot. It's over five, up five, and depending, you know, depending on the scatter plot, you get different results, and those different results tell you something about the relationship. They tell you, for instance, if there is a, if there seems to be a relationship, or if there's no relationship at all. And both of those answers are important. You know, so it, it tells you information about what your 
you know, what you're looking for. So the first thing you want to look at, well, that's a scatter plot. Now I'm going to show you, talk a little bit more about something called R, uh, the R value. And the R value has to do with correlation. So that's next. So when we're talking about correlation, what we're talking about, uh, the first thing I want you to look at is if you look at the data and ask yourself, is there some sort of form or, or direction to it? Is there a pattern that you can see? Or like this one, is it just totally random? So if you look at this one right here, the dots are all going up to the right. So these are low, these are a little higher, and then that one's the highest. Okay, and this one right here, well, they look like they're kind of starting out higher, most of them, but there's a couple that are smaller. Smaller As you get to the right, there's none that are higher. So it's it's going down to the right, but it, it's definitely more random than this one. This one is somewhere in between, right? So it's going down to the right, but it's kind of scattered around. It's not as, as uh, tight as this. Okay. So the first thing I want you to see is is there some kind of direction? If there's no direction like this, then we just say that R is equal to zero. There's zero correlation. So basically, if we're if we're looking at two different uh, um, two different variables and we're graphing them, they, they don't have anything to do with each other. That's what it's telling you. The, um, the other ones are going to depend on two different things. It's going to determine how, how close they are to forming a straight line. Like this one forms a perfect line right here. On this one, R would be equal to 1. And it would be positive because it goes up to the right. So the sign... The sign of R depends upon the direction. In other words, up to the right is positive. Down to the right is negative. So this one, R would be positive. This one seems to be going down, so this one is negative. This is down, so this one is negative. If we look over here, the original one, that's positive because it's going up to the right. This one, I would say, even mostly, if we ignore this one especially, it's mostly going up to the right. So R is positive. So that's one, one thing. You want to look at the direction. The second thing is the strength. The strength depends upon how close the points are to a straight line. Okay? And that is going to be a value from 0 to 1. So 0 would be uh, no relation. And then 1 would be all points on the line, OK? So the strength doesn't have anything to do with the sign. So if we, if we go back up here, remember this is positive 1 because all the points are exactly on the line. If we had one that's like this, That would be negative 1, because all the points are on the line, and it's going down to the right. 
This is positive because it's going up to the right. Okay. Now, as far as as far as far the other stuff that you need to know, the line of best fit would be a line that fits the data as well as you possibly as well as possible. So I could make a line anywhere, but there's only going to be one spot that kind of goes down to the middle, down the middle, and describes this data as well as possible. You want it to, <clears throat> you want to make all of the distances as small as they possibly can. Now that means making some of them farther. Um, if you can make them, make some of. I mean, if you if you put this line too close here, you make these close but these become too far. So you just have to balance it out. You will not have to worry about that at all. All of the questions that you have, uh, that you'll be given, already have a line of best fit. So your job will not be to draw the line of best fit. Your job will be to look and compare and ask yourself, here's your line of best fit. Here's your points. Are they close or are they far? So if we look at this line of best fit and these points, compare them to this one, which one is stronger? And the way you tell is by the one that's closer to the line. So this one is, oops, I spelled that wrong. That one is strong, okay, because they're close to the line, right? Now that means this is going to be close to to one. So it'll be maybe like 0 0.9 because 0 0.9 is close to one. I mean, it's positive because it's going up to the right. Now if we look at this one, the line goes, it's going to go down the middle and you want to look at this one right here. It's definitely weaker than that. This is kind of medium. And so it's negative because it's going down. So medium would be somewhere around 0 0.7. Now this one has some other number, other points further out. So this is weak. It's negative also. So 0 0.5. That would be weak. This one or equals zero because there's no correlation. So when you look at that, these are some values to keep in mind. Positive one, negative one, perfect, okay? So this one is up to the right. This one is down to the right. So this one is perfect on the line, okay? 0 0.7, negative 0 0.7, okay? Close to the line, but some a little bit farther. Kind of like medium. Right? That would be like this. Okay? So a little bit further. So these these are all close, right? But then there's also a few that are a little bit farther. Not too much farther, not like this, but a little farther. Okay? 0 0.9 or 0 0.8. And when I say that, I mean positive or negative. So positive or negative 0 0.9 or 0 0.8. That would be very strong, close to the line. 0 0.5, either positive or negative, would be weak, okay? It has direction, but many points far from the line. And let me just so that's what you're gonna have. So 0 0.5 would be weak. Okay, it has direction, right? So we can tell it's going down to the right. 
but a lot of those points are far from the line. Zero, no direction at all. Okay, it's just random, and we can't tell anything about it. So for it to be have a, have a number other than zero, it's got to have some direction. How strong it is and how close it is depends on on how close tight to the line it is. Now, the, the last thing is when you have a scatter plot with a line of best fit, you can use that scatter plot to make predictions. Okay. So we've got all these data points. And so what we did was we tested some people and said, okay, depending on how much exercise they they get, they need more or less sleep. So the, the idea is more exercise, probably you need more sleep, right? And so we, okay, here's some, here's a person with, after one hour of exercise, they needed seven hours of sleep. Okay, two hours. Okay, this person only needed seven also. But this one, three hours of exercise and needed 10 hours of sleep. And you can see none of these points are exactly on the line, but they are going up to the right. So there is, you know, there, there is an R. I would say that R value is probably somewhere around 0.7. It's positive because it's going up. Now, where the prediction comes in is how you, you ask questions about how many hours of sleep would you expect for a certain number of exercises? Um, for a certain number, hour, hour, uh, certain length of time exercising. So how many hours of sleep I expect to need for, I don't know, uh, three hours exercise. Now notice we, we already have a point that has, where somebody took three hours of exercise, but you have to, you, this is the line of best fit. These are going to vary. You do not go to the point. You go to the line of best fit. So what you do is you go straight up and you find that point. And there it is. Then, so for three hours of exercise, you can expect to see this is six, seven, eight, nine. Nine hours of sleep. Okay. So you predict nine hours of sleep. Now, as you can see, that this is just an approximate guess because all of these points are off the line. So you, you expect it to be within a certain distance, and that's going to be based partly on the R value. You know you have a certain amount of error. The R value tells you how much error is in, in your model. So you're going to say three hours of exercise, nine hours of sleep, but you're not going to be too surprised if they only need eight hours, or maybe even a little bit more, 10 hours. So you don't expect it to be perfectly nine, but that's a good guess. So if we were going to use um, five hours of sleep of exercise, okay, then you would go straight up, straight over, and that would be 10.5 hours of sleep. So five comma ten point five. Okay, and that's how you do it.